Welcome back, guys. You're watching Will It Forge. This is where my brother and I turn a shovel into a knife. This is part two. If you missed part one, be sure to check it out. In the last video, we picked a shovel, cut it up in two pieces, and started forging it. The shovel is now flat, and now we need to start grinding off all the scale. We need to chop it up in several pieces. Then we're going to weld all the pieces together and weld a handle on it. And that's all coming up here in part two of Will It Forge. All right, guys, this guy at Kyle's house. I'm going to go up to him and see uh, what he's up to. Yo, what's up, bro? Hey, Josh. What you doing? I'm just uh, measuring this out and seeing how many strips I can get out of it. Go grind all the scale off of this and do a layout and cut it up on the bandsaw. Cut it up on the bandsaw. Alright guys, so we're just cutting the scales off of the, uh, the knife and now we're going to be cutting it on a bandsaw. We already lined out what all of our cuts are going to be. Question. So are we going to be cutting the other black line right here? Yep, I just want to grind some of this stuff off while I can hang on to them easier. Here we can start working with. It's gonna be super cool when we forge weld these together. Make a nice big solid block to forge a knife out of. Just gotta cut them up a little bit more. I hope the bandsaw blade holds out. It's uh, not sounding good. There's a whole bunch of teeth broken off and different places on it. Yeah, you can see right here, there's a little one inch section with no teeth. That's because the teeth are too coarse and uh, they're catching on this thin metal, but it's all I have right now. All right. Oh yeah, we can work with that. That was a shovel, guys. Uh, I think I want to take the burrs off of them just so we can get them to stack a little bit tighter together. I'll go back to the sander and lightly take the burrs off with this one. So I just want to take the little burrs off just so everything will sit closer together and get good forge well. You turn the bin on. Seriously starting to get excited now. It's starting to look slowly more like a knife. I mean, I know that doesn't make sense because it's just a bunch of strips of metal, but kind of starting to look like a knife. That's cool. Think we make a good I think it's gonna make a good blade. I'm pretty sure that shovel was heat treated, so I bet we could probably harden this steel pretty well. Won't be a very big blade, but it will be able to make something that has a good amount of thickness to it since we cut it up into little strips like this. We got uh, looks like 20 little strips here. Pick a card, any card. No, not that one. You'll mess up my magic trick, dude. Yeah, that one. That's good. That's good. Does it have silver? 
pick card, any card. Uh. Alright. Don't let me look. Let me know when you're done. Yep, we're done. Okay, now, place in the deck. Is that your card? <gasps> I don't know. It didn't have a black on top there. <laughs> I don't think it is. No, it's your card. Uh-uh. Whatever. All right, bro, what's next? Now we can clamp them all together really tight and use the uh, MIG welder to weld them together, just, just the ends so they'll stay together in the forge so we can forge weld them all solid. I want them nice and even. There we go. Clamp them in there good and tight. All right, let's weld. I get my gloves. Sparks just landed on my foot. Does that have a screen cover? Don't worry about that. Worry about my foot. <laughs> that That's hurt, man. Right here. That's why you uh, you won't see me in shoes that have uh, netting on top of them. Otherwise, sparks and all sorts of grind dust and stuff gets down in there. Pro shoes. Non-slip, too. <laughs> that hurt, it still hurts. Houston, we have fire. <laughs> maybe, um, I should, maybe I shouldn't weld with the trash bucket underneath there. Is this a hazard problem? <laughs> That's one way to get rid of trash. Put it under your welding. <laughs> and that, kids, is why you don't weld with trash underneath you. <laughs> Flip it over and... Well, this end up. Now I'm gonna grab a handle we can weld on there so it can uh, hold onto it while it's in the forge. That looks cool. So now we got ourselves a bigger chunk of metal. We're gonna be able to work with it so much better than that piece of shovel, which it still is a shovel, but it's just not a shovel. <laughs> so that's the handle. Yeah, this will be the handle so we can hold it inside the forge and work with it under the press and hammer. Turn the heat up. What do you mean, it's not hot out here? Actually, it's pretty nice out. It is pretty nice out. Um, I think we have another hazard. We should move it. Nah. Nah. It'll be fine. I think I want to put a weld right across the middle that doesn't go very deep. I'll turn the heat really low on it. That'll help clamp those pieces together. If you watch, it should squeeze a lot when I put it in the vise here. Or just a little. <laughs> turn the heat down. Just a small little weld to help hold that. I'll grind that off too so that a bunch of weld doesn't get in the billet. So Kyle, before you weld that, tell me, have you ever welded anything to your vise? Oh yeah, lots of times. <laughs> What'd you weld to your vise? Billets of Damascus. This is actually a Damascus right now that we're making. It's all out of one type of steel, but it's definitely pattern welded steel. What makes Damascus Damascus? Well, what makes like the modern day pattern welded steel is multiple layers like this alternating. You'll have two different types of steel and they'll alternate one after another. That way when you etch it in acid after you forged all the layers in there, you'll be able to see all the variation in the pattern from the two different types of steel etching differently. Basically, whenever you get two different kinds of steels and mix them together, you got Damascus? Uh, pattern welded steel, we call it Damascus. True Damascus is made uh, differently, but this is kind of the modern version that most people do. Now what are we doing? I want to grind the top of that weld off a little bit. I just want it to hold the layers together, but I don't want to get a bunch of that into the final steel, so I'm going to grind some off top. The big boy. Well, that up then. I'll leave just a little bit of weld on there. 
Now we can soak it in some kerosene and diesel fuel while light forge. Why you want to soak it? It actually helps the layers forge well together. It creates kind of like a flux inside the layers. Thin layer of carbon protects them from the atmosphere. Well, that's cool. Learn something every day. Kerosene helps bond stuff. So is it kerosene or diesel or both? A little bit of both, I'm pretty sure. I mixed it up a long time ago. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If so, be sure to leave us a like and stay tuned for part three and subscribe. Smash that like button. Leave a comment below if you think this shovel will turn into a fantastic knife.